facts you might not know From the biggest flops to the greatest hits This is Trash Can Timbits Hey there everyone, I'm Beaton, your trash-loving raccoon friend Bringing you a new episode of Trash Can Tidbits Last time I asked the question, true or false? Baz Luhrmann shot Mercutio's death scene during a real hurricane. The answer is true. During the filming, a real hurricane did indeed start coming in, and the beginning was even caught on camera. The clouds moving in and the wind picking up over the beach was not an optical effect. It made the filming of Mercutio's death scene even more dramatic. Fortunately, nobody involved in the filming was injured when it really got started. Now with that addressed, let's get started with fact number one. Did you know that Tomorrow Never Dies has the most product placement of any James Bond movie? As I mentioned a few times, BMW had a three-movie licensing deal to promote their cars. The featured car in this was the 750iL model. Besides BMW, other product endorsements that appear in the movie include Bollinger Champagne, Omega Watches, Smirnoff Vodka, Shaken Not Stirred of course, Sony Ericsson Phones, and the Avis Rent-A-Car Company, among others. The original VHS release for the movie even advertised the tie-in video game from Electronic Arts. A lot of these companies would even be reused in future Bond movies, which means they never have to pay for their budget again. Fact 2. Did you know that legendary silent film actor Charles Chaplin was making silent movies well into the 1930s? By the late 1920s, sound films were becoming popular. Chaplin, however, considered the ultimate visual artiste back then, and even today, did not jump on the bandwagon. He owned his own studio, made his own films, and vowed that his character, the Little Tramp, would never speak on screen. Particularly, his films of the 1930s include City Lights, The Gold Rush, and Modern Times are still considered classics. By the time Modern Times came out, however, he did begin to experiment with sound in some scenes. Even the rare instance of the Tramp singing, which was the first time Chaplin's voice was heard on camera. The 1940 film The Great Dictator would be his first all-talking film, and for good reason. Due to the escalating war in Europe, he knew there would have to be dialogue so that he could fight Hitler his own way, by parodying him. Turns out, when Chaplin finally did speak on camera, he had quite a lot to say. Fact 3. Did you know that Dick Van Dyke wasn't cast in Mary Poppins because of his comedic talents and dancing chops? Believe it or not, while casting for Mary Poppins was underway, Walt Disney himself was reading a newspaper article asking various people about their current thoughts about the entertainment industry. It contained a quote from Van Dyke that said he didn't like the way that Hollywood was pandering towards a more adult demographic and lamented that there wasn't enough family entertainment. Disney was very taken by that comment, and after viewing some episodes of Van Dyke's eponymous TV show, the actor was invited to come to the studio, and Disney himself pretty much offered him the part of Bert the Chimney Sweep on the spot. Fact 4. Did you know that despite how memeable Matt Smith's infamous have sex dance routine from Morbius has become, I did find one tidbit about it that was interesting, at least to me. Matt Smith, best known as the 11th Doctor from Doctor Who, also originated the role of Patrick Bateman in the London cast of the musical American Psycho. Now, I haven't seen the show, but I'm surmising that he got to do a lot of dancing partially or fully clothed in expensive clothes, complete with a thirst for killing people. That whole dance routine from the movie Morbius seemed to me like both a reference to American Psycho and a jab at how awful this movie was going to be, and that Smith probably just didn't care how it was going and he wanted to have some fun with it. That's my observation anyway, so take it with a grain of salt. Fact 5. Did you know that out of all of Stan Lee's cameos in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and elsewhere, Iron Man 2 was the only movie where he plays a real person? Excluding movies where he's playing himself, he has a blink and you'll miss it cameo as Larry King during the opening Stark Expo scene where Tony Stark is working his way through the crowds from his point of view. It should be noted too that in the first Iron Man, Lee's cameo has him being flanked by two lovely ladies while wearing a smoking jacket, and Stark mistakes him for Hugh Hefner of Playboy fame. He was supposed to have a line where Stark realizes his mistake and Lee responds, happens all the time. The exchange was filmed but was ultimately deleted. Fact 6. Did you know that there was one character from the sitcom Happy Days that disappeared without a trace? 
Throughout the series, we become acquainted with not just the Fawns, but also the Cunningham family, which included Richie and his sister, Joni. But there was also a third offspring of Howard and Marion Cunningham, their oldest son, Chuck. Chuck, a basketball player, was eventually phased out of the show very early in its run once it became clear that Fonzie was going to be one of the main stars of the show and the big brother Richie really needed. As a result, Chuck disappeared from the show entirely and was never mentioned again. Supposedly, he went to college on a basketball scholarship, but the show never mentioned this either, and he didn't even show up in the series finale. Today, when a character from a TV show disappears with little to no explanation, it's called Chuck Cunningham Syndrome. Fact 7. Did you know that the James Bond franchise has had one consistent performer in every movie from the very beginning? Well, until 2012 anyway. When composer John Barry scored Dr. No back in 1962, he employed a young 17-year-old trumpet player by the name of Derek Watkins. Beginning as a big band trumpeter, Watkins toured with acts like Benny Goodman, Ted Heath, and Jack Dorsey among many other notable musicians in a number of genres from jazz to rock. Watkins took the lead as the main trumpet player for every single James Bond movie, playing the iconic theme and other musical cues throughout the franchise. Between Bond films, he worked on other notable films such as Superman, Gladiator, Chicago, he's the trumpet solo you hear at the very beginning, and many others. Watkins sadly passed away in 2013 at the age of 68, shortly after the release of Skyfall, the film which celebrated the 50th anniversary of the Bond franchise. Fact 8. Did you know that J.G. Quintel, best known as the creator of Regular Show, as well as the voice of one of the main characters, Mordecai, didn't know how to yell before the show began production. Like Mordecai, Quintel is a laid-back dude with a love of music, video games, art, and is rather shy around girls. The one thing that Mordecai does that Quintel cannot do at will, however, is yell, due to Quintel's real-life chill demeanor. For example, in the episode It's Time, Mordecai and Rigby have an angry spat at each other in a time vortex prompting the former to scream that he killed Rigby, which Mordecai does, but given the show's surreal nature, he doesn't stay dead for long. Anyway, Quintel either did not know how to scream or doesn't like to in real life, so he apparently had to take lessons from a coach. Aside from the moments of the show where Mordecai needs to be angry and yell, J.G. Quintel really does fit him to a T, mostly because he doesn't use any voice other than his own. Mordecai is totally his persona. Fact 9. Did you know that during the making of Jurassic Park, Steven Spielberg gave his own interesting motivation to the actors to picture the Velociraptors? For most of the movie, the Velociraptors are not seen, only heard. This includes the scene where the main characters observe them being fed live cattle, while trees and bushes are seen being rustled in the enclosure below. Behind the scenes footage indicated that Spielberg himself was out of camera shot behind the actors making growling and hissing noises into a megaphone to give the actors motivation of what they were seeing. The whole process back then and even today is still pretty silly and in the end I'm sure multiple takes were wasted on trying to get Sam Neill, Laura Dern and Jeff Goldblum to keep a straight face. It's one of my personal favorite behind the scenes stories of the making of Jurassic Park that's for sure. And I got one more Spielberg movie fact for number 10. Did you know that the opening musical number from Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom was originally going to feature more of Willie Scott dancing? The opening of the movie has the leading lady, Willie Scott, played by Kate Capshaw, in a Shanghai nightclub singing a Mandarin Chinese version of the song Anything Goes, complete with a giant chorus line of female dancers. Capshaw, in addition to learning the song in Mandarin, also learned the choreography. When it came time to filming the song, however, it was discovered that the beautiful red gown she had to wear was a little too form-fitting, and so she unfortunately wasn't able to dance in it. But hey, she proved she could sing, so I think that was fine for Spielberg. And here's today's trivia question. We're going to head back to regular show for this one. One supporting character who works with Mordecai and Rigby at the park is Muscle Man, a green, short-stacked guy who constantly makes jokes about his mom. He and his spectral friend High Five Ghost delight in egging on the duo in different bets and dares that often result in the show's frequent surreal and strange experiences in the second half of each episode. 
However, Muscle Man is known to make the occasional truce with Mordecai and Rigby to help them win the day. Yet his real name is only mentioned a few times throughout the series, most notably by his girlfriend, Starla. My question to you is, what is Muscle Man's real name? And there we go for this week. I hope you like what I brought you, and I hope you've also been enjoying some of the other types of videos I've been uploading lately. It's been fun making them, that's for sure. Let me know other facts you want me to cover in the future, and I even may start taking requests for songs to play on the drums, when I get much better, that is. And, uh, but as always, though, please don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and ring the bell to be notified for future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.